Good morning. Most of the attention in the AI race is on semiconductor chips and companies like NVIDIA compared to Chinese companies like Huawei. But what's even more important is electricity. Chips can be packaged differently or more of them can be used, for example. But the choke point for this entire industry is electric power and the cost of that power. This is the head of ChatGPT in his testimony to Congress. The cost of artificial intelligence will converge to the cost of energy. Chips, automation, network optimization, all those are important, but none of it works without lots of electricity and the energy constraints dictate everything else. China produces more electric power than the United States, the European Union, and India combined. And China's cost of that electric power is lower than almost anywhere else in the world. What's more, China brings new power sources online much faster and much less expensively than anyone else. A viewer forwarded me this ex post from Mr. Bertrand here, which blows apart the notion that our AI industry is going to be ahead of China's for much longer, assuming that's true even now because electricity is everything. In nuclear power, China is building nuclear plants at least three times cheaper and sometimes up to seven times cheaper compared to other countries. Insane advantage, he calls it, and it's hard to argue. In the UK, the Hinkley Point project will cost $43 billion for 3.2 gigawatts and comparable plants in China will produce 12 gigawatts for $27 billion, which makes them six times less expensive in China. And Hinkley isn't even done. Engineers there are concerned that further delays will result in even higher costs, up to another billion pounds, that's $1.3 billion higher. The nuclear industry in the United States is even uglier from a cost perspective. The Vogue toll nuclear plant is finally online after 15 years. The original cost estimate was $14 billion, but the final price tag was way over $30 billion. No other reactors are under construction in the United States. But for these two, the cost was $16.6 .6 billion per gigawatt, which is seven times more than the cost for Chinese nuclear power. China will build 10 reactors and 12 gigawatts for $27 billion, while the U.S. spent $37 billion for two gigawatts. China is also building nuclear reactors faster, two to four times faster, and again up to seven times cheaper. Industry is energy transformed, and these lower energy costs ripple through economies, compounding along the way, and Chinese companies have enormous competitive advantages over everyone else, which are likely to last generations. What does that mean for countries outside China, outside the United States? For the governments across the world who are looking to modernize and industrialize their own economies, who will they look to and who will they buy from? The suppliers for this Vogtel plant in Georgia, or one of the contractors who still can't get Hinkley Point done on time, let alone on budget? The question answers itself. So Chinese companies will get those construction jobs and build electric utilities all across the developing world and enjoy all the advantages that go along with that. Hundreds of millions of new customers. Back to the AI race then. Nobody in the United States or Europe seems much interested in building new power plants for household consumers or to lower energy costs for other manufacturing. But now it's an AI race with China and America's AI future depends on nuclear energy. Winning the AI race means we need a lot more of it. The United States will win the global race, he says, but first we need to unleash our energy dominance. The MIT Technology Review goes deeper into it. It's the tech giants who need lots more electricity, but new power plants take a long time. In the case of nuclear plants, China builds them much faster, much more affordably. And let's not forget, China has a much better supply chain for uranium than any of these nuclear plants in the United States or the UK are gonna have. 
Here's where the United States gets its reactor fuel from now. And we can see the problem right away. Russia is a big piece of the pie. And Russia is much friendlier with China than with us. And Russian uranium is also powering a lot of the power plants here in China. But our big tech companies and their data centers are in the United States. So that's where they need new power sources. So they're signing long-term deals with utility companies. This is a good example of the problem though. Amazon needs a lot more power right now, immediately. And it takes a long time to build new plants. So Amazon signed a contract with this utility in Pennsylvania for nuclear energy for Amazon Web and AI data centers through 2042. There are additional plans to explore small modular reactors. So eventually, maybe, they will build a new reactor in Pennsylvania to meet this enormous new demand on the local system. But they say that's not a problem for existing customers. With the large load customer, Amazon in this case, now on the grid, it will result in lower energy bills for everyone else already on the grid. I'm very curious how that's all going to work, and I can't wait to come back and look carefully at electric bills in Susquehanna, Pennsylvania to see just how much households there are saving on their electric bills now that Amazon is sucking down massive volumes of electricity to power their new data centers. Color me skeptical about any of that, but let's keep an open mind for now. This is the elephant in the room though. The United States is producing just slightly more electricity than we were 20 years ago in 2005. In the European Union and Japan, it's slightly less. The lines are declining slightly over time. China is parabolic. And if it's true that the key technologies for the rest of the century will be driven by intelligent networks and high-speed computing, and those are driven in turn by access to affordable energy, it looks like this race is already over. This is Ningbo Jijang. Be good. Found one of all.